All right, second day we're going to look at this three pole or six pole monopole, however you want to call it. This is brought to you by Renaissance Charge. With Renaissance, going green saves you money. r-charge.com or r-charge.net. So again, what we're going to show you is this three pole monopole, three gen uh, motor coils. Oh, sorry, right here on the motor coils. Two slaves, one master, 19 gauge wire here, single, and then 19 gauge wire with um, the 26 gauge wire for the trigger. And we haven't changed anything from yesterday's video except we're adding more. Well, we turned the lights on this time so you can see the color, and we've added more batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve volt batteries. Four, ninety-eight volts, and we're at twelve ninety-four on this battery, which was running yesterday, so it's slightly discharged. And we're going to start this up with the trigger resistance coming out of these two wires right here going to this pot through the bulb and this is a 125 ohm rheostat pot you can see on there and we have that pretty much bypassed or at the lowest level or close to the lowest level just to get it starting so we're going to start it by turning, we've got the switch turned on here got this bypass switch on and it's not going to take much to get this thing going and you can see it's going to climb up there on its own see the bulb lighting up because it's taking quite a bit and then you see a shift there. So we're going to bring this thing down. We don't need to push it that hard to get it going very fast. We're going to keep it around the 2 amp range. It's going to shift again probably. You can see there that it shifted. But yeah, it's still going faster. Now the benefit of that is what we're doing is with these energizer or generator coils here these three these are totally isolated from the circuit again so they are functioning as an actual mechanical load to power all these LEDs now you can see them in color <laughs> so we have 24 strips of LEDs here um, and they're drawing about 2 amps worth of load at 12 volts and then of course like no other system in the world we are charging 100 volts of batteries here and you can see it was 98.0 now it's 98.1.2 now in charging of course it is under load a 2 amp load right now the primary batteries is under load 12.5 volts but isn't that incredible we're actually charging up 100 volts of batteries off of a 12 volt battery and um, powering all this load at the same time so let's look at our RPM here so again we're about 4700 RPM forty seven hundred rpm and then we could go higher in input voltage or we could tune this to go faster and again this is getting quite hot here this pot so let's take a look the heat we're producing right here 
this will get up there pretty quickly in temperature. 130 degrees. And of course you got this little bulb right here, which is an incandescent lamp. So we have a lot of losses in heat right here that could be calculated into the system. Not very many losses right here. These are still rel relatively cool. Room temperature is 65. So these are running relatively cool. Master coil, 77. But you can see this is warming up relatively fast for a 2 amp system at 12.5 volts. And so you can see the charging batteries are climbing as well. And there's no transformer in the system to account for uh, charging that high voltage. And of course these batteries are in series with each other. So the, po the, the negative on the charging battery is exactly tied in with the positive on the primary. So a battery in series with another battery cannot charge another battery, especially of a higher voltage. Uh, in parallel you could charge one battery from another if it was a higher voltage than the other. But here we have a higher voltage being charged by a lower voltage, considerably lower voltage, and they're in series with each other as the SSG circuit. They're connected down here on the back together, this red wire and this black wire connected in the same terminal. I have them going to the amp meter here, the negative. So another little bit about this configuration here. This is our molded kit which we have swapped out the rotor for an aluminum rotor with six magnets in it and then we have a little flywheel here to get it started a lot easier and um, so this is kind of our deluxe model here and I've added a couple of switches down here and a heat sink and the larger transistors and then a couple more switches in the amp meter for demonstration purposes and of course all these LEDs. I could put quite a bit more LEDs on here and I could lower this um, these rods right here. You can see the gap. It is The rods are just on the surface of the coil there and I could bring them down closer which would present more of a load. You can see this one right here, the gap. So ideally, I would, for these size motor windings, I would like to have probably double the size of these coils and um, be able to generate a lot more off of this load. I mean, we still have quite a bit of torque here to play with. And, uh, and to use. So let's take a look again. Now we're already at 98.4 climbing on these batteries. They are indeed charging. And we are continuously powering all these LEDs. So let's take a look one more time at some temperatures. We're already at 160. Four degrees, 166, 167. Um, so again, what we could do is actually power uh, more light bulbs, such as we do when we change, bring this down. With the right bulbs, we can create light, and um, we could actually put a transformer there and use that power otherwise. Um, anything else we need to say here?
Oh, people were asking. These are 12 amp hour batteries right here. And then these are 18, 20 amp hour batteries on the end. These are just what I had lying around here, nothing special.